Hello everyone, and you are looking live here at Morrison Stadium here on the site of the University of Nebraska Omaha where it is the location of today's Class A quarterfinal between Kearney and Creighton Prep. Hello, I am your host Jeff Ekstrom along with my partners today, Cannon Rath and Jonathan Snower from Omaha Wasside. Guys, glad to be with you here um, as today's Class A qu quarterfinal should be a good one. Yeah, it's going to be a great game between the two. Kearney and Prep, you know, they always like to, they're always competitive against each other. This year is kind of the year Carney and Prep like to see the dominant sports as we've seen in football. Now they've been doing soccer. You're going to last season, these two saw and we saw Prep win. So, you know, it'll be fun to watch these two as Carney's out for redemption today against Creighton Prep. Defending state champions with a lot of returners from last year. So we'll see how Prep fares against a, a Carney lineup that um, is looking good. So Carney is the number four C. They are the higher C in today's matchup. Well, Creighton Prep is number five, but like everyone, I think, has said before, this one's going to be a dogfight and nothing less is expected between these two teams who met in last year's Class A semifinal here at Morrison Stadium with the Junior Jays coming out on top of that one. 1-0 uh, in the shootout. Carney looking for redemption while Creighton Prep is trying to reach uh, the semis um, for the second straight year and try to make it to the state finals for the seventh time in eight years. So Creighton Prep is a successful program. And if you know... We can make a reference to the Detroit Red Wings. They're like that to Nebraska high school soccer. 26 state appearances. They're 11th in a row, fourth in a row for Kearney. Both kind of programs, uh, established programs going head to head today. Should be a pretty fun one. First, let's get you the starters for each team. First, we'll start with the visiting Junior Jays. Starting first is number three, a junior defender, number James Ambrose. A senior goalkeeper, number five, Benjamin Nust. Then you got a senior midfielder, number six, Pierce O'Brien. Senior defender, number eight, Cameron Tran. A junior defender, number nine, William Reinhart. Junior midfielder, number 10, Luke Waters. Senior midfielder, number 11, Thomas Braun. A junior forward, number 13, Duncan McGuire. Sophomore midfielder, number 15, Nathan Franco. Junior defender, number 16, Kyle Samino. And lastly is the senior midfielder, number 21, Ave Evan Lonsberry. The starting line is for the Junior Jays. And now for Carney, in goal is the junior, number zero, Jacob Hardy. Others, the junior forward, number one, A.J. Fies. Senior midfielder, number three, Christian Dakin. Junior defender, number six, Jane Ingen. Sophomore defender, number eight, Bryce Kavorik. Senior forward, number nine, Hunter Novacek. Senior defender, number 10, Caleb Bean. Junior midfielder, number 14, Carson Schwarz. Senior midfielder, number 15, Matt Studi. Senior defender, number 18, Sam Straka. And up front is the junior forward, number 23, Royce Austin. And guys, but also when you think about this matchup, you're going to see a lot of good forwards out there today. For Carney, it's going to be Royce Austin, 15 goals on the year, leading the Bearcats. He had 22 a year ago. And then you had Duncan McGuire, uh, who's a junior this year and is one of the state leaders in goals with 21. Yeah, McGuire kind of showed up out of nowhere for prep this year after uh, the state championship last year. He didn't get a lot in. He's up over 40 points on the year, so we'll see how he can have an impact on this match for prep. You no know, going over the Royce Austin, the Bearcat junior forward. Still, he's had a great year for the Bearcats. You know, the speedy forward. If you're creating prep, he's gonna be your player to watch. Every every team Cardi has played, they've have changed their scheme to match, to just have someone on Royce, watch Royce, and have someone that's on him. And if you're Royce Austin, a year ago against the same team, he missed. There was a shot he could have won the game for the Bearcats, just missed the open net, and then we went to the and then we went to the extras and lost in the PK. So I think. If Royce, I think out of anyone for the Bearcats, Royce is going to be the most anticipated forward Try to, you know, get that revenge from last season. And something that Carney will have this year that they did not have a year ago is scoring depth. Last year was all about Royce Austin. Getting to him up front, 22 goals on the year. No one had above four uh, in the second lead score. But they, this year they have A.J. Foz, who was injured most of last year. He has 10 goals on the year. So for Creighton Pratt, they've got to deal with more than just Royce Austin this year when it comes to their back four in their midfield, something the Bearcats are going to look to exploit today as we kind of discuss kind of the keys for each of uh, these teams. It's going to be Carney pressuring that back four because, uh, like uh, we've seen, the back four is not the strongest for Creighton Prep this year. Yeah, Prep's going to have to really stay back and watch that counterattack um, on Carney. It's something that's been getting them in the backside uh, this season. So 
we'll have to see how, how that back four holds up. Yeah, well, we're going to take one break here before uh, we get started uh, for kickoff here in Omaha. You're watching here in the Class 8 quarterfinal, Carney Creighton Prep coming up here on the NFHS Network. And welcome back, everybody, here to Morrison Stadium on the site of the University of Creighton. As I accidentally said UNO's campus in pregame, but we are just about set here for kickoff between the number four seed, Carney High, and the number five seed, Creighton Prep. Should be a good one. Creighton Prep 16-3 and three on the year. Their only losses coming to the likes of Omaha Westside 4-0, uh, West Des Moines 2-1, and then to Omaha South 2-1. For Carney, coming in with a record of 15 and two, they only, their only losses coming to Lexington on the road 2-0, and losses to Grand Island on the road 1-0. The reach here, Creighton Pratt beat Bellevue East in the first round of the A6 district tournament, beat Bellevue East 2-0, and then dominated Miller South in the district final 6-1. For Carney, they beat Fremont 5-0 in the opening round of the A2 district uh, tournament, and then beating Millard West. 4-2 in the district final to reach here in the state tournament here in Omaha. As both teams getting set. Carney's going to run a 4-3-3. Four, three, three. four in the back, three in the midfield, and three up front. Crane Prep, a similar uh, kind of, looks like, yeah, they're going 4-3-3 three, three here uh, before kickoff. I mentioned the scouting report. They sometimes like to drop to a 4-3-2-1. That, that midfield's really going to have to hold up. Mm -hmm. Got to keep that ball away from the back line, especially on the counterattack, on the on the pressure. So, Yeah, that's one of the things mentioned in the scout report as well is that Creighton Prep's back four like to push up. And so when Carney has the chance to counter, that's going to be the key maybe to get some offense opportunities they didn't get last year. Carney only four shots on net a season ago against Creighton Prep here at Morrison in the state semifinals. And they have the depth to get some more on here today. Especially, it helps that they don't have, the prep doesn't have Matthew Smith like they did a year ago, who's one of the better goalkeepers, goalkeeper runs, I'd say, in the state tournament. He was athletic enough to make a save in the shootout and then come out and score a goal of his own. That's how good he was. You know, that shot he did last year against the Bearcats was an absolute bolt into the corner. Like, it was one of those shots you cannot ask for a better mm -hmm. shot, and that was just an amazing shot that, that uh, Matthew Smith had. Well, early possession, Creighton Prep will have it here in their Back third, look to put it up in the midfield. Of course, Creighton Prep, they always have a big class of seniors. And last year, not any different. 
I believe 16 graduate seniors, 10 of them go in D1 soccer, including two-time Gatorade Player of the Year, Ed Gordon. One of the better players you'll see come through here in the so state of Nebraska in soccer. Perhaps get a look to one to play one through. Jacob Hardy will come up and play it early. Hardy, will, starting next season, will be on the watch list for breaking a NSA state record for career shutouts. He has 29 now. Maybe I should knock on wood for saying a shutout. <laughs> and just an interesting fact with Carney having to maybe score early and maybe able to score some goals with their offensive firepower. Creighton Prep has not given up a non-shootout goal since the 2016 state tournament in uh, the final against Omaha South. And that game turned out to be 1-0 loss. Prep started to push up uh, in the long run here, not trying to make short passes, not trying to keep possession. They're trying to get up towards the goal and try to get something early here. Um, but they're maintaining the possession. You know the defense the Bearcats have at the back four. He's been a solid, solid group of guys all season. You know, Prep's goal is probably to score early on them. Here's Luke Waters, seven goals on the year. Second lead goal scorer for Creighton Prep. Dump it off here for number 21. Evan Lonesbury will drop it back. And you see they're now back four. Yep, and this is where they need to attack. Ball went too far, but as you noticed right there, that back four at Creighton Prep was playing up high. And so when Carney has a lot of opportunities to take it away and create a counterattack, they got to take advantage of it. You know, we've seen a good amount of those last couple weeks. We saw it, in, we saw it against uh, Millard West in the district tournament, in the district finals when Carney scored two goals like that. And they will take that advantage. If they can get that good pass up past the back past the back line, they will take it. And they, but like we said, they've, like I said, a lot in the district finals, they scored on it. So it could be no difference here today. Well, a good ball through, but Jay Ingen punches it away. There's Lonesbury. Could be taken away there by Royce Austin. And here come the Bearcats. A.J. Foz on the run. He'll try to get in the corner. One of the fastest players on this Bearcat squad. Fought for. And there's going to be a foul Three on Crane Prep. And the Bearcat fans are loving that one. Junior Jays on there, not two big fans. That, that was one. just a, a play where the, uh, the Bearcat, he kind of turned his back and uh, Will Reinhardt just kind of stuck a leg through the middle of his legs. Here's a set piece for Carney. Free kick, one of their big advantages that they have is that they're just so big up front in the back that they, uh, yeah, that ball was out, that they're big enough and physical enough to win those set pieces. It's one of their biggest advantages when it comes to a game like this against Creighton Prep. Caleb Beans thrown, A.J. Foz, now to Royce Austin. Surrounded by three Crane Prep defenders. Now tries to get outside, A.J. Foz. It's going to be off Foz. It'll be thrown here for Creighton Prep. Here's Benjamin Nust for Prep. will play it to the outside, just outside the box. Get downfield, Caleb Bean steps in front for Carney. Here's Schwarz. Go back for Bryce Kvorik. He's gonna send one up. Here's Hunter Novacek. Carson Schwarz for Carney. We'll try to play it in for Novacek, try to play it to the outside. If it goes out of play and it will be Creighton Prep possession. Yeah, as you were talking about that size difference, it's not only going to be a difference in the, in the set pieces, but in the midfield, winning balls in the air, goal kicks, uh, free kicks. It's going to be uh, interesting to, to see how, how Prep kind of deals with um, being, being a lot smaller than, than the Carney mids here. Yeah, if you're uh, opposite game plans of Carney, you want, some, you want those set pieces, free kicks, corners, great Prep, you want to avoid that as, uh, at all possible. Here is A.J. Foss, look play one in the middle, Christian Dakin. Looks to play well outside Nov Novacek, he'll get there, shot, and he's oh. gonna go off the side of the net and out of play. Great shot there by Novacek though. It's a great shot though. He was trying to go near post, just mm -hmm. pulled a little too wide and no goal. Well, they kicked with the right foot. If he had took that left foot advantage, it could've been a little different story, but you know, when he's being pressured on, it's one of those just kicking on net. There's one, in the air one by Creighton Prep. There's a goal kick one by Creighton Prep. It's 
Here's Duncan McGuire to send it to the outside. Ball is missed, but Crane Prep will still have it. And the Crane Prep with those forwards. Carney's going to, they don't want to give them any space. So you're going to see a lot of pressure on the Crane Prep forward by talk Carney. Talk about the counterattacks. Crane Prep's playing all the way up at midfield with their deepest guy. So if, if Carney can get something quick and get going. It could be very dangerous. Especially with the speed that Royce Austin and A.J. Foss has, so that can be deadly for the Bearcats. They can get the advantage on that. Great prep on the outside, far sideline. <coughs> Here's a touch pass to be broken by Bryce Kavorik. He'll just send it back deep for Nust, who will come out and grab it. These are just... Seven minutes into this Class A quarterfinal. There's Matt Studi on the outside. It's going to go out of play, and it will be in the possession of Creighton Prep. And the head referee is going to switch that call. It's going to be Carney and Matt Studi. You saw that for a second. was putting his hands up like, why is it their ball? And <laughs> that referee changed it. Sometimes it's all about angles on, mm -hmm. on calls like that. So. Here's the ball in the box. I don't know what going after. It's going to be headed out. A.J. Foss will just let it go. So Caleb Bean will have a throw in. Deep in their own third. Mm -hmm. Could be very dangerous here if they play their cards correctly. Here's thrown by Caleb Bean, senior defender, first year starter. Pertors will header just outside the box. Here's a kick by Studi. It's going to be deflected up high. Pertors trying to get right back into the box. There's a ball to A.J. Foz. Let it play. Pops one with the air. Still bow for Nova check a header on wide. And it'll be punched out. And it will be a corner kick for the Bearcats. And now we'll see Christian Dakin come over here and take the corner kick. He's been the corner kick kicker for the Bearcats. So try to get one across in the back for a good ball for the Bearcats and maybe get a header in. Maybe expect A.J. or, Car or Carson to come in and try to get a header. They usually like to go after Carson Schwartz coming in through the box. And here is the corner by Dakin oh. and punched out by Nust. AJ, or that's Novacek, will have it just outside the box. And take it away. And here comes Creighton Prep. They'll have numbers. Bearcats only three defenders. Send it to the outside. And good broken up there by Jaden Ingen. Very physical approach, mm -hmm. but he did it just clean enough to not get a whistle. And Carney's back in possession. Ingen bailing Carney out there on that counterattack by the Junior Jays. And now Foz is going to play it up ahead. He'll be onside, looking for a cross. Blocked by Creighton Prep, but he'll get it right back. Tries to send one right in front of the box, intercepted, taken away by the Jays down here. Having it, it'll be Luke Waters. Look to play it up, does. Nice little touch pass up for Lonesbury. Going to send one to the box up. Kavorg is there, missed it, Ooh. but Hardy is right there to clean it up. That's some great one-two quick passes there from Creighton Prep, trying to get into the offensive third up there, but Carney was there to stop it, and now they've got possession back. And here is ball sent all the way across the field. Novacek will have it played in the box, but it'll just roll wider than that. Nust will just pick it up, and he'll hold on. He'll hold on. So here's Nust to kick right to Caleb Bean. Studi touch pass to Dakin. Dakin will send one off Curry Prep to Caleb Bean on the outside. It'll go off. Junior Jace. Thrown by Bean. Just a little over 10 minutes into this Class A quarterfinal. Carney Creighton Prep. Austin gets to send one in the box, but only one Bearcat is there. He gets to it. Here's Foz. Get play one up. Austin. Here's a shot that just goes. Just a little far to the right. Try to go near post again. For the second time, the Bearcats on that inside shot try to go for the near post. And for the second time, Prep got the advantage on that one. This time he took it on the ground and just took an extra step, allowed Nuss to get into position there on the front, uh, the post. And then he tried to weave it in, just not enough. And that's something the Bearcats are targeting is the left side of the Junior J defense, something that they monitored when scouting the Junior Jays 
was just how much uh, the left side plays up. And maybe it's just a little bit weaker than the right side. And you see they've had a couple of chances. Maybe not high percentage chances, but chances nonetheless. Yeah, and it's about momentum. It's mm -hmm. about building momentum, getting those chances, and getting confidence mm -hmm. in yourself. Here's Carson Schwarz, puts it to Royce Austin. Austin to Straka. Left foot, gonna put one in the corner. Novacek on the run. Oh, Novacek will keep in play. Junior Jay is there, but he's gonna take it away. Here's Novacek, but poked loose. Here comes Creighton Prep on the counter. Luke Waters gonna try to send one cross field. But Sam Straka is there, headers it right to a Junior J forward, who played to the outside. Straka, nice defensively played out, but will be a corner kick for Creighton Prep. Good Their first of the game. Good defense though by Straka right there. Just one on one, would not let his man get past him and see it now we have a corner kick, but it was great defense. Here's a chance for Creighton Prep. It's that piece right here. It's looking like they're stacking the top of the box and they're all gonna rush in. Here's the ball that just goes out wide. A man was there with Junior Jays, but it went out. So Jacob Hardy will have a goal kick. So here's Hardy. Play for it, here's Novacek, tries to head over forward. Missed it, but Foz will get there anyway. They'll play it up ahead, that's number nine, William Reinhardt. They'll just play it back for Nust. And Nust will look to switch fields, but he'll just go right up center. Bean was there, but Waters headers it ahead. Studi now has it. Creighton Prep trying to get on the attack. Play one in the middle, but Kovorik. There's it forward, but taken away by the Junior Jays. Play to the outside, may look for a cross. Strzok on the defense. Here's a shot in, but Matt Studi was there to punch it away. And here comes Russ Austin. And He's taken down on the mm -hmm. slide, but the ref plays advantage. Now Strzok will play it back. Off. Giving an off deflection for That's Creighton Prep. Going to roll into the box. Yep. You know, going back to Austin, another thing you're going to see is we've seen it all season with teams. They're going to target Royce. And, and at one point, Royce's frustration is going to get with them. And then we saw in the Miller West game, he actually was winning a lot of those plays where he was being down. So it could be one of those happens here. Well, here's Austin. That's going to be broken up. It will be on the opposite side out of play. But this is where we get to say it. It's basically a corner with oh. Sam Straka. Sam Strzok with the cannon of an arm. And this, this is the corner kick. Watch it be in the box. He always, he always has a good ball in the box. So this is going to be, you know, hopefully just another one of those typical Sam's throw-ins. It's deep in their offensive third. Soon enough, you'll see why. Thrown by Strzok, a little short, but looking for Swords on the header. Studi with Ooh. the header, that'll just go wide. And we have substitutions. For Carney, Caleb Crittenden, senior forward, will check in. And for Creighton Prep, it's going to be number 19, Matthew Abasa, junior midfielder. You know, for the Bearcats, going to Crittenden, he's actually a, a guy that comes up, that does really well off the bench for the Bearcats. You know, early on in the season, he was actually leading the team in goals. And, you know, he's just one of those players that's really deadly and comes off the bench. So he's basically just another starter out there when they do the sub. Six goals on the year off the bench. So definitely some... Scoring power coming from Caleb Crittenden. Foz will look to play that. He's on side. Can try to outrun his man. Cannot. Jews will Junior Jays will keep him in balance, but they'll play it off Foz and it'll be a goal kick for Nust. Substitution again for Creighton Prep. Check in his number 20, William Dempsey, senior forward.
Well, check that. Number 23, Matthew Anderson, junior midfielder. So here's Creighton Prep in the, in the midfield with the plate ahead and getting physical. We'll break it away and get it to Caleb Critton. He'll just play it back for Straka. Plays it right to Schwartz. Schwartz played to the outside. Caleb Bean. Bean looking for Foz on the edge. Will, but it just goes up too far. And it'll be a goal kick. You know, starting off this game, it kind of looked like it was in favor of prep. And now as we've seen about 17 minutes, about 16 minutes and 30 seconds in, it's kind of been a mixture of both. Carney's had their chance and the press had their chance. So this is shaping up to be a good game so far here in the first half. Yeah, not like last year it was just lopsided possession-wise. Oh, last year it was mainly prep and more of the advantage. Carney kind of just played, ba just backed up the defense and kind of just played back. Here's Austin. The difference, though, is Carney's got two shots, so they've got a little more momentum and a little more they know they can do it. Uh, Prep's just got that one corner that just went just wide, so we've seen it all so far. So here is Creighton Prep. They look to play it on the outside. They do. Strzok on the run. Look to break it up. It's going to be... Headed out play by Kavorik, so another corner for Creighton Prep. Every corner kick for both teams is going to be one of those that you're going to want to take and try to try to get a good ball in and get, get a quick goal because well, with the defensive game, this is seeing the corner kicks of what so far as we've seen from both teams. Here's the corner from Prep. Be in. Header does just go out of play, and it will be a goal kick. That was a good ball though, Prep just had right there. and mm -hmm. was, um, The Prep forward was just in a good position, but just hit it out. That ball sealed just wide of the post too. So not a bad chance for Frank Prep. And they have it here near sideline. We'll play it ahead. Back to McGuire, but Royce Austin has it for Fox on the outside. And it's gonna go off of Creighton Prep. So Carney will have the throw on Caleb Bean right near midfield. Just throw it in right here, Foz, touch a pass. Austin played the sideline, back to Austin, he'll go to the outside. He'll look for Cross, slid across Ooh. and Nust will dive out and make the save. Great save by Prep, that was a, you know, um, looked like Royce there, just try to get the ball off the ground, could not kept on the ground, it was a great save there by Benjamin Canust. Royce Austin just out, outpaced his defender there to get in, and he almost had a great shot um, at at the Carney uh, forward coming through, but to no avail. You know, going back to that, Royce is one of those players. He kind of seems like he would slow up slow. He'll go on one-on-one, -on -one and he'll get those speeder bursts. You just start right there to get around his man. That's what Royce is always really good at. Carney looked to play. Schwartz looked to play on for Foz, but Cream Prep broke it up right there. Touch pass by Waters will go wide and right to Jaden. Again, now Schwarz to Dakin. Back to Bean, looks to play one up for Foz, but broken up. And now Foz will try to get in the corner. Look at the cross one for Austin in the middle. Foul four, and it's going to be a foul on Crittenden. And Crittenden did not like that call mm -hmm. on him. It's a foul on Crittenden. It's a free kick here for Creighton Prep. As we are just about halfway through this first half, this Class A quarterfinal between Carney and Creighton Prep, tied at zero. Carney's had majority of the chances. Here's Schwarz. Foz will play one on the outside. Plays one up to McGuire. Now try to cross field here. Now here's Creighton Prep on the attack. Plays one to the outside. Look to cross one in, but Hardy will come out and make the save. Good save by Hardy. Yeah, on that one, McGuire just found himself just on the other side of, of Hardy there, and 
He was able to get to it first, and Carney maintains possession. Take on the outside, headers it forward. Goes behind Aircat forwards and right into the foot of Creighton Prep. As is number six, Pierce O'Brien. To play it to the outside. Slide there by Crittenden is missed. And here come the Junior Jays. Kvork punches on downfield. Green Prep still has it. They're attacking third. And on the line to midfield. And here they come. Give them the space. Played to the outside, might go too far, and it does. Just crosses the line on that one. Yeah, you'll get something. Here's a ball, played at the side of the field, but Nust will come out and play it. With 18 minutes to go here in this first half. Side at zero. Playing to the outside is Cameron Tran. Look to play it up. Stude looked to step in front, but nice touch pass. Here's Luke Waters. Played in for McGuire. Now here's a chance in the middle. And what a save by Jacob Hardy. Oh, baby, what a save by Hardy. Just dove across. I didn't see who got the shot off, but he was right there. Just had a great shot, but Hardy comes away with the right hand and knock it out for the corner kick. That was just a great read on Hardy's part to not go too far to the far post there. And... Gave himself a little room if he needed to dive, and he did. Got a hand on it, and Prep will have a corner. Now here's another corner for Creighton Prep. They put on the pressure these last few minutes, and Hardy will just scoop it up. But Hardy keeping this game tied at zero with 17 minutes to go in the first half. You know, last season when Carney and Creighton played in the, in the semifinals here at Morrison, it was Hardy who came away with a lot of big saves and right now he's showing that success and continue on from last from last year's tournament appearance to this year with that great save. Foul on A.J. Foss, a free kick here for Creighton Prep. Here's the kick, it'll be third back out. Kale Critton is there. Looking for a foul by Maurice McGuire. Took it away, took a shot on that, but goes wide. Yeah, on that play, Critton, he wanted the foul on that, and he still has his hands up, but excuse me, one of those is not going to go on his way. Michael McGuire, 21 goals on the year, leading goal scorer. He was just a little bit off balance when he had a hit on that one, and it went just wide. And here's Creighton Prep looking to attack. They'll play to the outside. They look for another cross. Low, but Studi steps in front. Could punch it away. Creighton Prep really putting up the pressure here. Here's Pierce O'Brien. Play one again to the outside. They chip one in front by Straka. Cannot. Good defense there by Sam Straka. Here's Pierce O'Brien again in the middle of the box. Look, play one in. Ingen got a foot on it, but the flex right to Jacob Hardy, who scoops it up. There's a ball punched downfield from Hardy in the midfield. Ball to flex off Dakin, but here comes Pierce O'Brien and the Junior Jays. It was even. From about the first 25 minutes of this match, I would say 20, but then the last five minutes, Cream Prep has really turned up the pressure, including that chance right in front of the box. Jacob Hardy had to make, make a nice right-handed save to keep this game tied at zero. So all deflected out wide, it's gonna be a corner kick. Another one for Creighton Prep.
So here's a chance for the Junior Jays. Fourth corner kick of the game. Low and it'll just be popped up way in the air. Played right back in. Headed for by Studi. Austin has it. And there's Crittenden. Trying to get something going for Carney. Great prep takes it away again. Here's Pierce O'Brien. Great prep looks to put one in the box, headed out by Ingen. And now Austin will just play it ahead. Oh. Header deflected off Foz, but goes right to a junior J. That's Pierce O'Brien again. Yeah, these last few minutes have now been swinging inside of prep. As you know, you can see they've had all the possession. They're, tr they're kind of trying to pick out the Carney defense still here in the first half. And they showed a little bit, but still the Carney Bearcats defense has still been playing pretty solid. Straka looking to play one out. It's going to be a corner, corner kick. kick. That one rolled just left of the flag. So fifth corner of the game for Creighton Prep. Haven't taken advantage of one yet. T still tied at zero. So here's the corner. Way up in the air, far box, headed back to the opposite corner. Here's the ball again played. Hardy goes out and makes the save. Nice play by Hardy because that was a dangerous cross right there by the Junior Jays. Tried to play it ahead for A.J. Foz. Headed right to Christian Dakin. Played in the corner for Foz. He'll be on side. Holds up. It's the play one in the middle for Austin. Let's give me punch loose. All right. Schwarz battle for it. Hezer Ford. Mr. Bryan is there, and now Creighton Pratt will play to the outside and look to get something going. 11.50 left to go, first half. Ball is going to be passed. Bryce Kavorik looked across, but Kavorik deflects, but it looked like it went off a Junior J. Look. The corner to corner. The assistant wants a corner, and the ref will award it. Yep, they're gonna call a corner. Maybe the ball was already out by the time it deflected off of Junior J. You know, from our angle, it's like like um, Jonathan said earlier, from our angle, it's kind of hard to tell stuff like that one. Bryce, it looked like Kovorik hit it off of Junior J, but he could have been out of bounds when he did it. So that's why what, what could have awarded the corner kick. Yep, they're all the way across the field. So there's another corner by Creighton Prep, headed out. And now we just play it back out for Creighton Prep. They're gonna take a shot. Hardy will make the stop. Another save made by Hardy. Good mm -hmm. job. Now here's Carney pushing up in the offensive third. Foz sends it in. And Nothing. it's going to be playing the box and try to get out, but here's Dakin, but it's going to be taken away. And he's going to get a play physical up front, and he'll be able to get back into the position of Carney. Here's Matt Studi. Looks to play it ahead, but headed right back by Creighton Prep. Studi will play it to Straka. Straka will put one in the box ahead for Foz. Not offside, but it deflects right to a Junior J. And it will go out of play, but it will be Carney possession. And now uh, checking back in for the Bearcats will be the senior number nine, Hunter Novacek, comes in for Triple C, also known as Caleb Critton. And then for Franco the and Waters also back on for the Junior Jays. He's created some chances. Here's Dakin in the corner. With the play on the sideline, intercepted by Creighton Prep. And taken away. Here's, uh, yeah, they're going to play it on. Schwarz will, and it'll go out. Tried to keep it in. Yeah, when you have two, two uh, junior J's on you like that, it's a little tough, but Carson tried to do his best.
just about nine minutes left, and the last ten or so minutes has been Creighton Prep in the offensive third and a chance for Carney, but nothing, nothing from either side. Looks we'll like see how how they'll close out the half here. Looks like another Caleb Bean throwing for the Bearcats. Here's Bean. Good throw in Carney. Looking to create some chances here at the end of this first half. Here's a play in the box. And Schwarz just off the ground trying to take a shot. is blocked. Here's a ball through that Nust will pick up. Yeah, that one kind of bounced out of the Bearcats' control, and Nuss was there before anyone else could. Here's Luke Waters. One-on-one -on -one with Caleb Bean. Waters will go to the outside. Here's a shot that goes right off Hardy's left hand and hit out by Sam Straka. Another great save made by Hardy. He's just been doing a great job for the Bearcats, keeping the ball out from the junior days to keep it a 0-0 score here in, here in Omaha. Great prep, we'll leave it back. Look to get one in the box. We will, but it goes right to yeah, Hardy, who Hardy. makes the catch. I think Hardy has a hands to be a wide receiver next <laughs> season for the Bearcats. Here's Foz, who looks to head on forward, but no one is there for Carney, and there is Nust. Crane Prep get played outside on the run. Bryce Kaforic, he'll just play it out, so it'll be a throw in for Crane Prep. Kaforic's been a young, being a young defender for the Bearcats in the sophomore. He's done a great job for the Bearcats all season long, back on the line, back on the back for defense. You know, he always gets back there, makes good plays, and you know he has a bright future ahead of him after after the season. Evan Lonsberry checks in for Crane Prep. In the box, popped up in the air. Luke Waters is there. Bean will just get out of here on the near sideline. Another throw in for Creighton Prep. Carney maybe just trying to survive till the end of this half. Here's Pierce O'Brien. Next duty plays Austin. Now up Carson Schwartz. This is where Bearcats need to attack. Here's Hunter Novacek on the outside, and it's going to be stepped up and taken away by the Junior Jays. Ball hit right to Royce Austin. Touch pass, Matt Studi. Austin will try to feed one through, but deflects right to A.J. Foss. will play at the outside, Caleb Bean. And it'll be taken away by Luke Waters. Carney's worked really well on the outside offensively in this first half, um, making their way up into the corner and getting some great shots into the box. Uh, haven't been able to finish, though. Foul on Crane Prep, so free kick here for Carney. Maybe just a little too far out for Royce Austin, like the strike he had in the district final. Oh, that was a beautiful shot Royce had in the district finals. Just an absolute bullet to the left corner. I believe it's just a little too far out for this one. Yeah, they're going to leave it to Sam Straka. Look to put one in the box with five minutes to go in this first half. And here it is. It goes right up the goal. Look for Matt Studi on the run. But went right to goal into the hands of Nuss for Creighton Prep. Going back to Straka. Straka's known for having a cannon of an arm and a cannon of a leg. So he's got both on his side. In possession for Crane Prep is James Ambrose. They'll look to cross fields here. 4.35 remaining. Here's Nuss to put one downfield. And we're going to have a foul on Carney. Is on Matt Studi, I believe. Seems to have a discussion with the head referee. And here are the Junior Jays. 
Touch pass to the outside, Waters. And it'll go out of play, goal kick here for Jacob Hardy. McGuire returns for the Junior Jays. And so McGuire does check in. He's been out for a little bit. Leans Just under 40 minutes or four minutes to play. Yeah, it looks like we have a stoppage. <laughs> uh, injury on for Creighton Prep. Looking like Thomas Braun getting help off the field here. Hope he's all right. Mm -hmm. Scored the state championship winning goal last year in the final against Omaha Westside, I believe. Final 3.40 to go in this first half. Tied at zero, guys, your thoughts? Oh, it's, been, this first half. it's been a great game so far. Both teams have been playing pretty well. As you know, as I said before, prep, though, they've kind of taken kind of their swing, though. They've been pressuring the Bearcats defensively, even, and I'm coming clutch so far for the Bearcats is Jacob Hardy. On the offensive end, Carney's done a really good job on the wing. Uh, they just haven't been able to finish in the middle, so we'll see how they uh, fight to survive here to close the half and how they'll come out for the final 40. Just about ready to resume here at Morrison. Goal kick here for Jacob Hardy. Here it is. Header won by Luke Waters and Creighton Prep. Shot off the ball there. Duncan McGuire will look to play it in. Kavork will just punch it back out. He'll go to the outside. Touch pass in. And here comes Creighton Prep for cross. But Ingen will punch it away. Here's Royce Austin. Play to the outside, Dakin. Again, attacking that left side. Here's a touch. Here's Austin. Go play it for AJ Foz on the run. And it'll be played out. It'll be a corner. Oh no, it's a goal kick. And Foz wonders why. Looked like there was a little bit of contact. That might be what he's asking for. Nonetheless, Nust will take the kick. So here's Nust. Midfield, Schwarz, play it, but header. In the third for Creighton Prep, and it'll go off of Duncan McGuire. So here's a throw in for Caleb Bean. 2.20 to go, first half. Ball will go out. So another throw in here for Carney Austin. Try to leave it for Hunter Novacek. It's going to be punched out. So quarter kick here for Carney. Now we'll see the corner kick. Uh, Carney specialist Christian Day can see what he can do. So here's Christian Dakin. Looking to get something near the end of the first half. Look for a ball, probably to try to get Swords in there for a header. His main target, my guess. 140 to go. Here's Dakin. Put up high. Look on the run. There's a shot. Save by Nust. That was an incredible save by Nust right there. That was just a great read on the header, or off the header, pardon me, by the Bearcat uh, defender. And he. Uh, Sent it near post and Nuss was there. And yeah, we have a foul, Creighton Prep. And now here's Carney with a minute 10 to go, looking to put some pressure on the Junior Jays. Both goalies now became clutch with a diving save to keep the score, uh, keep the score tied. So here's a set, another set piece for Carney. Royce Austin. Maybe looking for Sam Straka or Matt Studi on the run. He'll put one in the box. He does. Nuss will come out and he'll make the jumping save. Outstanding play from both keepers here in the first half to keep us scoreless. 
couple diving saves. Some and here's a play in the middle on their side. He's all alone, and it goes up and over. That was Luke Waters. That was a great ball, though, that prepped his play there for Waters, but got it underneath it a little too much and just sent it over the net. That was a good sigh of relief, though, by the Bearcats. And Rick Harding maybe just played off for these next 15 seconds and go to half. 10 seconds. Ball go out of play. Five seconds. And they'll just run it into halftime. And that will do it. We are at halftime of this Class A quarterfinal. And we are tied at zero. Both goalkeepers playing and keeping their teams in it. Tied at zero and a half here at Morrisett Stadium in Omaha. Take a break. Come back with a halftime report here on the NFHS Network. Hello, everyone, and welcome back here to Morrison Stadium here in Omaha. Halftime of this Class A quarterfinal between Carney and Creighton Prep, tied at zero. And joining me now is Nick Rubeck from the Omaha World Herald, soccer writer. Nick, how's it going? Great. What a good day of soccer, yeah. huh? So as we uh, close this first half, uh, both teams uh, playing relatively well. Both teams having their chances. Uh, from what you've uh, seen so far, what are your first half thoughts? Yeah, I think it's been uh, I think it's been wide open, um, a lot more open than last year. I think someone just commented over in the press box that Carney already has more shots than they did uh, in the entire game last year. So, you know, I think we expected that a little more. Both teams have a little more offense. Um, both keepers have come up with monster saves here uh, to kind of keep it uh, keep it zero zero, but um, should set up for a really good second half. 
Yeah, and when you talk about this first half being entertaining, it's been that way for the entire Class A tournament so far. <laughs> we had a good one. North Platte, Omaha South. Uh, Omaha South kind of pulled away late, but it was entertained first yep. half. Omaha West Side getting that shootout victory. Yeah. Uh, so kind of what's uh, what have been your kind of thoughts on the Class A tournament uh, so far? It's been entertaining, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing short of excitement. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it started started this morning. Um, Lincoln Southwest had its, uh, had its hands full with Grand Island. Um, Grand Island probably leaves here feeling pretty good about uh, about the way it performed. Um, Westside, Westside gives up two equalizers. Um, I don't know that they probably have done that all year. Um, did it twice in one match, and and North Star gave them everything they wanted. Um, you know, South uh, kind of in the process of writing the the South story, but um, they probably don't leave here really feeling like they won. Mm -hmm. um, you know, losing a defender, center defender. Uh, for the semifinals, so um, yeah, if, if you were going to pick one day, this would have this would be the day to be here and and soak in the drama for sure. And so when you talk about that Class A semifinal coming up yeah. on Saturday, between Westside oh, and Southwest, both teams playing well. Uh, what are you looking for yeah. uh, come Saturday in the I, matchup? Um, I honestly, I think I, I think I see a lot of similarities between the two. Um, you know, Westside. What Westside does, they do really well, and I think Southwest does a lot of the same things. Um, I would probably lean towards Westside, thinking that they do them a, a little better. But uh, but Southwest, Southwest is good. They mm -hmm. they could definitely uh, they could definitely come out on top on that one. And then you know honestly, any either of the teams that win this match, mm -hmm. I think could give South some fits, mm -hmm. especially if South is going to be a little a little out of sorts mm -hmm. in the back. Um, you know, I, I told somebody after that match that they would probably honestly rather see prep. I think Carney has a, a few more of the dangerous forwards mm -hmm. and danger uh, in that scoring area that, that could, uh, could kind of highlight where South is going to be missing, mm -hmm. uh, missing that guy. So um, whoever they get, they're going to have their hands full. Um, and then, you know, I, y you talk about those semifinals and you bang your head against the wall and get to the semis, and then you got someone from the other side waiting before you can even <laughs> celebrate. So. And it's not only been the boys' side. Girls' side was entertaining yesterday. You had a couple of upsets with, um, I mean, Midwest Metro, the schedule, I don't say entirely an upset, right. but they did beat uh, Lincoln Southeast 2-0 yep. uh, or 2-1, I believe. Yep, 2-0. Uh, you watched that game. Uh, did that maybe surprise you at all? Or um, You know, I, I think if you kind of score watch, it, it did um – you know, Millard West had lost some close matches throughout the year, all to really good teams. Um, Southwest probably hadn't been challenged like they had, like Millard West had. And, you know, um, talking to uh, Jackie Tevis Butler, she is really, really happy with the way that team is, is kind of coming on. Um, it's, not, it's not the traditional Millard West team chock full of, um, you know, club kid talent. Um, there's more athletes on that group and I think that they're kind of getting their soccer legs under them so you know honestly I wouldn't be surprised to see them um, spring another quote-unquote upset uh, upset tomorrow night in the semifinals and also when you go down to the class B as well you uh, had Omaha Mercy upsetting number two seed to yeah. on that one <laughs> and I can promise I didn't see that <laughs> one coming um, but yeah they I, and you know there are there are matches and, and you guys have seen soccer enough where it's a it's a win, but it, it, it shouldn't have been a win. They they earned every bit of that uh, of that victory over Gretna. They they really, after the first probably 10, 15 minutes, really stood toe to toe with a team that might have been the hottest girls team in, in class uh, in class B and even maybe in class A. But um, yeah, very impressive. They'll have their hands full with Elkhorn, um, Skylar Heinrich, the the star forward for them. Um, they got her hundredth goal of her career last night coming here to play soccer. So. Um, that defense will get tested again, and that, that should be a great semi. Um, we'll have a good mm -hmm. semi, whatever we have for winners tonight, too. So, And then lastly, we move on. You got the Class B boys. They kick off, start their tournament tomorrow. And when we were talking about Gretna, do you see that upset? Maybe with Omar Gross, they upset Lexington to yeah, get here. Yeah, you know, it could. Uh, nothing that happens tomorrow would be a surprise to me. Um, I, I don't think uh, I don't think any of those matches could go away that would really be a shocker. Um, those teams are very evenly matched. Um, a lot of teams coming on at the end of the year. You know, Scott's playing well. Gretna's playing well. Um, 
Yeah, they, that, uh, that'll be a, a, a really, in, don't bet on that. If you have somebody that can take bets, do not bet on Class B <laughs> soccer because it will be uh, wide open for sure. Because you got teams like, you know, Scott Elkhorn, Skyler, who was the last remaining undefeated boys team yep. in the year. They're just the five seed, 14 to two. Sue, who's been playing mm -hmm. well. Um, you know, Crete, who's been playing well there in their first tournament ever. Um, Elkhorn South, who has their mm -hmm. six losses, but you know, I think they lost to Westside, Prep, mm -hmm. um, South. I mean, th they've they've been tested this year, so uh, yeah, it, it'll be it'll be fun tomorrow for sure. And uh, right before we get begin the second half, uh, what do you think of the keys for each of these teams to be successful and pull out the victory here today? You know, I, I think Carney's going to kind of have to uh, kind of stick to its guns a little bit. I think Prep kind of gets you moving in different directions and kind of gets you out of shape and. Um, you know, Carney, if they can funnel things, uh, funnel things through Royce, uh, I think they can uh, find some, find some space. Um, you know, prep, prep is going to be prep. You know, they're gonna they're gonna find their uh, find their goal and, and and beat you one nothing. And um, you know, this that first half, there's uh, there's little surprise if there is another overtime or a shootout with these two teams. Well, thank you, Nick, for joining us here Appreciate on it, NFHS guys. Network. Yeah, good luck with the second half. Yeah, thank you, All Nick, right. for joining us here on Thanks. NFHS Network. Uh, we'll take one quick break before we start of the second half here on NFHS Network. Hello, Ron, and welcome back here to Morrison Stadium. Thanks, Nick Ruback, for joining us at the Halftime Report, giving some in-depth knowledge of the Class A and B soccer tournaments down here in Omaha as we begin the second half of this Class A quarterfinal between Kearney and Omaha Creighton Prep, tied at zero. Both goalkeepers keeping their team in it. Especially Nuss making that one save near the end of the first half. Ball is in the middle of the first half that Hardy made a diving save to his left that kept this game tied at zero. Guys, when you look at uh, each of these teams, what do you think the keys will be for them to be successful here in the second half? Uh, I think Carney's going to have to keep playing on the outside and keep keep trying to get it in on those crosses, get to, get ahead on it, something like that, because that, that, that's where they've been successful so far. Um, as far as prep, I think that they're going to have to they're going to have to just keep pushing. Um, they have they've had some great opportunities, and Hardy's been there every time. So something something's bound to break here in the last 40. Yeah, for the Bearcats, it's going to be one of those like Jonathan said, try to get on the outside on the left side where they're a little bit weaker. They Carney's trying to go in the middle, and Prep's done a great job defensively stop. So Carney's going to try to go outside, or if they get those corners, try to get a good ball from Straka, from Straka or Christian on those corner kicks. And then for Prep, they're going to they've had their moments where they've had the strong advantage on the side and when they get another one of those, those advantage moments of having all momentum that's going to be their time when they try to finally get one past Hardy who's been an absolute stud for the Bearcats and it just has one of those the feel of the game it's going to be a, it's going to be whoever makes the first mistake I think will be will be the downfall uh, for them in the way this game is being played right now especially how well defensively each of the goalkeepers are it's like to say something's yeah. bound to break for either team. It just depends which one comes first. Yeah, uh, most definitely. You know, both sides are praying it's on their it's on the opposing side first for prep. They want Carney, Carney, they want prep. So it's gonna be one of those. It's like you said, whatever happens first is gonna happen first. Or it could be one of those whoever scores first could be the winner. So it's just gonna be interesting to see how this one plays out. Crane Prep will have the win. Yeah, it's picked up a little bit over the over the course of the first half. Pretty light at kickoff, and it's kind of it's kind of starting to play more of a factor. But it's Nebraska. The wind's always a factor. These teams are used to it by now. Yeah, as Kansas said, it's Nebraska. So you never know the wind could change. Just a snap like that. As Carney tried to get in the midfield, but here comes Crane Prep on the attack on the outside, looking there. For Crane Prep was number 19, Matthew Bassa. So here's A.J. Foss on the outside. And it's going to go out of play. So Crane Prep will have the throw in. Carney wins it back midfield. Sends it straight up, but Nuss is going to be there first. Too far. Looking for Hunter Novacek on that run. 
which is a little too far. It was a great kick, though. And just Novacek tried to show his speed, but Nuss just came away with it as it was too far. But he actually almost missed it. Didn't catch it. Kind of jiggled in his hands, but he came away with it. Crane Crap Prep, they played each other a little in the state tournament. Some past history. Last year, Crane Prep winning the shootout in the state semifinal. Then it was Crane Prep in 05, beating Carney 4-1 to one in that state tournament. Then in 19, the last one Carney had against Crane Prep in the state tournament came in 1997 with a 2-1 victory for the Bearcats. Otherwise, they do not play during the regular season. Not a shock, considering from the metro area. Going out of all athletics, so Carney and Prep, they usually when Carney and Prep play, and it could be in any sport, football, basketball, usually Prep kind of has more of the advantage on Carney, but this year it's been the other way around. Carney's had the advantage on Prep, and here hopefully in soccer they can continue that su success against Prep. Austin trying to get a run going up front, but it's going to be broken away by the Junior Jays. They'll look, try to get a counterattack. Go out of play, throw in for Prep. Just a little under five minutes into this second half of this Class A quarterfinal. Studio hold it, give it to Austin for broken up. Edward forward. Give the Junior Jays Bossa on the outside. He'll keep it in front of him. Play one on one with Straka. Bossa cuts in, now gets sent well across, and it's going to be broken up. And Straka will punch it away. I think he hit, hit that one a little too hard. Carney made the first step and got the ball out of there. Here's the ball in, right into the hands of Jacob Hardy. Here's Hardy, looking for Foz, but plays short. Bounce goes over him, though. Headed to the outside for Christian Dakin. Dakin looks to play back, but step in front of there was Waters. Bean, nice defense though, is gonna take it away. Immediately right back to the Junior Jays. This is one of those moments I said before, Prep's starting to have the advantage and they're kind of showing it. So Carney needs to get a turnaround key so they can swing it back into a neutral advantage for Carney's. Trying to play it up ahead, but Nust will just wait for it to go in the box. And he'll play it. Look for Pierce O'Brien. They'll play it to the outside. Cream Brep has looked to play the outside for Bossa and looked to send a cross. But has not turned into a goal through the first 47 minutes. Touch pass broken up by Jane Ingen. Prep still has it though. Waters just outside the box. Or something gets past Dakin. Here's a shot that goes wide to the left. Those are some good moves that Waters had just to try to get around. He was battling, I believe it was with Jaden Ingen, and finally got away with the final shot, but puts it wide, but with the left foot. So it's a good try there by Waters. But So here's Jacob Hardy with goal kick. Seven minutes into the second half. Austin can have it forward. Bossa will try to get to it, he does. Studi steps in front, looks to take it away, he does, but there is a foul on the senior midfielder. Now Bossa. There he is back again on the outside, but this time he tries to cut in. Mm -hmm. Broken up by Bryce Kavoric, it'll be a throw in here for Prep. You know, as you mentioned, Jeff, they've been on the outside with Matthew Bossa there in the corner a lot, mm -hmm. sending the ball in, just haven't been able to capitalize to this point. We're looking maybe for Bossa's speed to beat Straka's size on the outside. They feel like they can win that one-on-one -on -one matchup. Well played there, it's giving me out. And it'll be off Hunter Novacek and Bearcats. Here's a throw in. Here's Duncan McGuire. 21 goals on the year. Tries to split. Defenders gets almost gets through. Still has it. Shot is saved and blocked out of play by Jacob Hardy. Another big save by Hardy. And you got to credit Duncan McGuire there. He was surrounded by three Bearcat defenders. Somehow got through all of them and was able to get a shot on net. 
That was a great move. You had all those moves to get around the barrier, has that shot, but that was a great play by both players. Here's a kick for Creighton Prep Corner. Across the box, and it's gonna go out. They maybe want a handball, but it's gonna go out of play. Goal kick here for Carney. Another great chance there for Prep. Like I said, the advantage swings are having them, but the Hardy is just on his game right now, and he's doing a great job for the Bearcats. It's the kind of swing more in the Prep's advantage right now. Jacob Hardy seems locked in. Prep will let their goalkeeper, Nuss, take it. Almost misplayed. Did it keep it in? Barely. Going outside. Here's Bassa. Punched away by Straka downfield. Austin steps in front, but unfavorable deflection. Nice step in by Straka. We'll give it to Carson Schwarz now out for Faz. Try to step in, but now here's Carney on the counter. Play to the outside, Royce Austin. Austin, Austin looking to come up. Him. Plays out front, but it's going to be kicked out and a goal throw in here for Carney. That was great defense by Prep. Austin tried to put it in front, but the Prep defender caught it and kicked it out. So that was a great read by him. Now here's Sam Straka. This is basically a corner kick for the Bearcats with this what the Army has. Ten minutes into the second half, still tied at zero. Here's a throw in by Straka. All the way in, a header toward the net by Schwarz, but right where Nust was waiting for it. Kick by Nust, kept in play by Bassa. Here's Straka. Gets it to Novacek, header right back to Straka. But Bassa came from behind, came with the play, and here comes Craig Prep on a counter. They have numbers. But a nice play by Rice Kavorik to keep it from advancing. Here's Pierce O'Brien, played to Duncan McGuire, now back. Here's Lounsbury, they'll try to switch fields. Give him space, play it back out for Pierce O'Brien. Touch pass, broken up, and Carney will get it downfield. Now Camino, right, the, the awaiting foot of Matt Studi. Here's a deflection, goes to the favor, Creighton Prep, but stepping in front there was Jane Ingen. They'll header it near the sideline, but right to Christian Nakin, and they'll look to clear it. AJ Foz, wanted to get past, the Prep defender could not. Here come the Junior Jays again. Boss on the outside, he'll get to it. Go back out. McGuire, touch pass, look at cutting into McGuire, but a good defense there by Matt Studi. There's Bossa again in the corner. Look for a cross, open there, a bicycle kick, but it's gonna go out of play. Tried to pull a Wayne Rooney there with the bicycle kick right there. Checking in. Crane Prep with number 23, Matthew Anderson. Nice offensive pressure by Creighton Prep. But nothing getting done. Kick by Hardy. Duncan McGuire broken up. Steve will get to it, does. Pass right to Christian Nakin. Downfield, A.J. Foz. There's Dakin. Come up behind. Straka looks to put one in the box. Let's get a hold up in the air. There's it right to Caleb Crittenden. Just checked in. Crittenden get play one to Faz. He falls. And it'll be broken up to flex off Crittenden. It'll go right to Creighton Prep midfielder. Look for a through ball. Boss on the outside. In the corner yet again mm. for Matthew Bossa. He's been living down there this second half. One on one with Straka. He's able to get Bossa off the ball there, but coming in late. Lonesbury. Back outside to Bossa. Back to 
Back to Camino. Put one in the box. Missed sliding tackle there by Studi, but Schwartz, they punch it away. But Pierce O'Brien has it for Creighton Prep. Here's a play in the box. Header is going to be deflected a little off. Looked like it deflected off Carney. You know, Hardy kind of read, and then it went the other way, but it was a good thing he really didn't go in his dive, so he got that one. That could have been very bad for the Bearcats. That could have been the mistake you've been talking about, but unfortunately it was not. Crittenden's header will go out of play on the far sideline. Here's a couple substitutions for Creighton Prep. Number two, Jacob Sedalis. Junior defender, number four, Gabriel Van Dyke. Junior, mid junior midfielder. So here's a throw in for the Junior Jays. Kyle Samino, play it up. Good read by, right there by Pierce O'Brien to tell there's a defender coming on and turn around. Prep maintains their possession. Here's Van Dyke, will play to the outside. Cutting in, here's a shot. Deflects off someone and it goes out of play. And they give it a corner kick. Yep, deflects off a Bearcat. Another corner here for Creighton Prep. And they've had almost all the possession here in the second half. This has been Prep's half so far. That first half, it was kind of switched into the carnival momentum, but then, the half, then that halftime came, and it's been prep, prep, prep this whole half. It'll be Waters from the corner. Here's the corner. Going far post, ahead header right into the hands of Jacob Hardy. In this game, that's a little too easy for Hardy right there. It's yeah, the he's definitely been on a high flying. Mm -hmm. Boz looks to get ahead, but Prep is there. Nice give and go. Here's Pierce O'Brien. Played to the outside. Samino plays it to Anderson. Nice touch passes by Prep. Kavork pops it up in the air. Looking ahead, Crittenden. Looks to win the header battle downfield. Here's A.J. Foz. Foz all alone. Plays it back for Crittenden. Crittenden makes a man miss. Still has it. Look, it'll be cleared away. Here comes Creighton Prep. McGuire gets it back. Dakin looks to step up. Does, but it goes right to... Carson Schwartz plays the outside, Austin. Austin hasn't had the ball much this half. Nice play there by Semino to get away from Austin, and here comes Creighton Prep. Nice move, plays right in the box. Semino, McGuire touches back to the outside. There's a shot that's going to go up and wide. That's Luke Waters yet again. The junior midfielder has been all over the, mm -hmm. all over the pitch for the junior Jays today. Waters has just done a great job. He's been in the right spots. A couple of great chances from he has missed. Has missed, but he's had a few great chances. Right there was another another example of him having a great chance. Jacob Hardy's. Low kick will go down the midfield. Studi harassed by two junior Jays right there, and they come away with it on the run. Here's a chance for great prep. It goes up and wide. That was number two, Jacob Zadalis. The speed he had right there to get around the Bearcats. Got a great kick, just kicked it a little too far, put over the left post, and wow, what a shot, though. And like I said, that's another side relief for the Bearcats. Another break for Carney. The through ball there from number four, Gabe Van Dyke, and he's been, uh, it, was, it was a gorgeous ball. A yellow card. A yellow card on Carson Schwarz. So he'll have to come off for a play. For those of you who are una unaware of the rules, he can be the next sub back in for Carney, but he must come off for at least a play. So that's a 58th minute yellow card. Carson Schwarz. And they're gonna let 
they'll redo the goal kick. Jacob Hardy, the call must have came before he got the kickoff. Um, so here is Hardy. Flexion Novacek, Studi, back to Straka. A header, but there is a foul called. They are number 15, Nathan Franco. So maybe here's a chance for Carney. It's on Sam Straka's side, so they'll try to put one in the box. Straka, like I said, he's got the cannon of the leg. Let's see if he can try to do something here for the Bearcats. That was a good read from Hunter Novacek. He kind of, he got in a bent down a little bit, allowed a little space for the prep defender to come over. Here's a ball He's in the back. box, looks a little too far. It is, Nuss is right there. Here's a ball way up in the air. Goes right to Bryce Kavor, carries it forward, Matt Studi. Studi up to Dakin. Dakin, looks for Foz, but too far. McGuire plays it back. Here's Anderson. Tried to play it through, but Ingen is right there. Off Anderson's head. It'll be headed right to Sedalis, who stepped up. Sedalis makes a man miss. Here's a shot that goes over. And it will be a goal kick. Hardy didn't touch it. Another big chance for the Junior Jays right there. And it's just, if you're creating right now, you're probably really frustrated with all these chances. In fact, great chances cannot connect on them. I and like I said, Carney's had another side relief on that play. Just another missed chance for the Junior Jays. Carson Schwartz checks back in. Caleb Curtin in checks out. Schwartz has that yellow card. Almost halfway through the second half. It's been all Creighton prep. They're up to 13 shots now. They've They've got to be really frustra frustrated with the way things have broken. Well, here's AJ Foss point. trying to get something on the outside. Holds up. Play one back. It's going to go out of play. And it's going to be deflected off the Junior Jays. And we are exactly halfway through the second half of play in this Class A quarterfinal. Host Jeff Extra, along with color Jonathan Snover and Kana Rath on camera, Zach Warnkin. Great prep, just not allowing anything offensively for Carney right now. Even when they've tried to get on the opposite side of midfield, they haven't been able to hold possession. Here's Bean's throw. Matt Studi holds up. Now it goes back to the outside, look for a cross. But it's going to be deflected off, it will be a corner kick. kick. Now the Bearcats specialist Christian Dakin goes in for another work of a corner kick. One of the few chances for Carney here. The best bet is to look for Schwarz, as you know, mm -hmm. use the height and try to put it in with the header. So here is Christian Dakin, the corner kick for Carney. Low, Low. right to Craig Prep, but it will go out, so another corner kick. Just a redo here for Dakin. 18.40 to go. And here's the corner. That's high. Nust will just punch it away, but we have a foul, or do we have an injury? Nust was on the ground for a second. It looks like they're calling a foul on Cardi in the box there. Doesn't look like it. it'll still be a throw in, just injury. So and he'll send Nust off. So he'll have to go off for a second, and you never know what could happen. Samuel Forrest, the junior goalkeeper, check in. He has played in six games this year, but we don't know whether that was started or, in the, as they say, garbage time. Could be big depending on what Carney does here. Sam Straka with a throw in. You know, with having a cold goaltender, this kid, something could happen right here that Carney could be well, well aware of and like. Just 
Still waiting for time to resume. And here we go. Here's the throw by Straka. So it looks like the sun's in the goalkeeper's eyes, so this one could be a. This could be that mistake you mm. were looking for, Jeff. Here's the throw in. Looking for Schwartz right in front of the goal. Out front, Studi is there, and it's going to be cleared away. And Novacek wants to say it was a him. It's, oh. it's going to be a corner, but that was oh so close. Oh so close. That's what the Bearcats wanted, but the Junior Jays came away with that one. And Nust will take his place back at the flag, so it looks like after this corner here, this is the time for Carney to capitalize. Here it is, low, header to across the box. Here's a shot by Foz, it's gonna be blocked and cleared away. Ingen's gonna look to pressure, but here comes Creighton Prep. But nice play by Caleb Beam, he had to slow it down. But here's on the outside is Vasa. Two and one, but here comes more attackers and defenders. Good defense there by Bryce Kavoric. Here's Novacek at the sideline. Semino looks to dump it off, but Novacek is, or Dakin was there. Here's Austin, he'll hold it back. And Straka will put up field. Studi on the run, we'll get there. So a few nice chances for Carney. Can't capitalize. They have a little some momentum now. Here's Royce Austin on the run. But broken up. Coming in is struck on it. Vasa looks to play it behind him. And it's be out of play throw in here for Carney. Struck looking to push the pace. Sideline here, Dakin. They'll go ahead. And go off a of Junior J. So a throw in here for Straka. You guys, you're starting to see Carney's getting a little more offense going you here know, in these last few minutes. Strzok is back in his spot, sun in the goalkeeper's eyes, and we saw it once. Crane came away with a great save on this opportunity, so we can see it again possibly here for the for the Bearcats and Jays. And with Nuss still on the sideline, it could mm -hmm. prove to be a big moment. Here's a throw in. Prep is there for it, and it will go almost exactly where he threw it at last time. So another redo here for Sam Straka. Senior defender, also started on the Carnegie State Tournament basketball team. And he'll throw it and he'll go behind the goal. And that will give with that, a chance for Nuss to check back in. As well as Luke Waters. And that could be big for the Jays if Luke Waters went back in. He's been hot so far. He's had some great chances, cannot capitalize, but you know, getting that rest, that can be help him regain his speed. And his just have a little bit of rest on him and see what he can do for the final 15 minutes for the Junior Jays. So here is Nust. Just over 15 minutes to play here in the second half. Things still knotted at zero. Nust kicked downfield. Studi wins the header there, but right back to the Junior Jays. Anderson Street wants a handball. Now here's Luke Waters. Straka is beat. Now there's Waters with a shot saved by Hardy. Another big save by Hardy. Waters just tapped that one with the outside of his left foot, took an extra step, and had a hit. Hardy was on the ground again, but the ball stays out of the net. Here's another corner for Creighton Prep. You'll feel their uh, number 21, Evan. Lonsbury starter, he's checking it back in for the Jays. And here it is. You go outside the box, here's a kick that's gonna go popped up in the air. Straka has it forward, but here's a shot that just whiffed on. By Creighton Prep, and Studi look to get it back downfield. That's Vasa who has it. Play on the outside for Waters. He'll have it for a cross, but goes too far. Kind of hesitate a little bit over there. And Bean will play it off the far sideline and a throw in here for Creighton Prep with 13.50 to go. That sun on the east side of the fields uh, 
got in the way of Anderson there and starting maybe to become a little of a factor. Here's a play in. Hardy comes out, makes the save. You know, a big factor, Carney's keystone in this game is Jacob Hardy. He's done a great job so far. Solid for the Bearcats. Made some great saves so far to help keep this a tie game. It was well played. Dakin broken up by Anderson, right to Straka. Here is Waters on the outside. Straka stride with stride with him. One-on-one. -on -one. Dakin looking to help. And yeah. it's going to be a Awarded corner. The corner. No. Waters will take it again. Mm -hmm. Another corner kick for Creighton Prep, their ninth of the game. Nine corners, 14 shots. Okay. Something's bound to break. Mm -hmm. Looking all too similar for the Bearcats like it was last year. Here's Waters' kick. Hardy came out for it. He made a great jumping save to get out there. Good job by Hardy. I think there was three J's there, and he just caught it right there in front of him. He's like, that's my ball. <laughs> Hardy's goal kick. Try to get to Austin on the outside. Touch pass, Studi steps up. Play near the sideline, kept in by Lonesbury. Nice pass right now for Creighton Prep. Pierce O'Brien, just play it back. Here's Anderson. Very efficient with the passer right now, but finally broken up and cleared away for Carney. Carney back on the defensive mm -hmm. after having a couple sh chances there. There's a chance for Crane Prep playing the box. Duncan McGuire still has it. Look to play it. Austin tried to come up with it, but could not. And we played back out. Crane Prep still attacking third. Since when the box, Studi jumps up and they'll deflect it away. Final 11 minutes. The junior Jays. There's a chance in the box. But it's going to be played out. It'll be a corner kick. And so here's Creighton Prep with their 10th corner of the game. 10.20 to go. And here it is. It's a good one. It's going to be punched away outside the box. Novacek looking to get there. It can, it, uh, he cannot. So throw in here for Cream Pratt with 10 minutes to go here in regulation. Lonesbury look to put in the box, headed away. Here comes Hunter Novacek. This is where Carney can attack. As for Foz, leaves it off for Novacek, and he slips. Maybe Novacek maybe doesn't fall there. He might have a chance. That was a hard cut, though. And it's going to be out of play on the pass for Waters here on the near sideline. And Straka will have a throw in with 9.15 to go in the second half. Still tied at zero. Ball miss, and here's a Royce Austin. Look to play one in for Foz on the run. He's gonna look to chip one in, oh. and it goes just four. I think Foz was a little preoccupied with the defender on his back there. <laughs> He kind of, he got it with the outside of his foot and it just went wide of the post. Wow, what a chance for Carney. Both teams catching some very big breaks mm -hmm. here. 
in the second half. Oh, that could have been a game changer, but like Jonathan said, AJ had the defender on him, so he just kind of tried to get off and just went wide. Fork pops up in the air. Played ahead by Duncan McGuire. Wants to hold up a shot deflected and blocked. But Anderson picks it up, but goes off at a wrong angle. Here's Carson Schwarz. Touch pass. Here's Ost on the outside. They'll be surrounded by two defenders, though. He's get played up Rise ahead Austin instead. Trying to use his pace. Austin holds up. Try to split defenders, and there's a foul. Now this is going to be a great opportunity to see what Coach Steinberg wants mm -hmm. to do. If he's going to have to take kick, and it's going to be Dakin, it looks like. Or what are they going to leave it for? Looks like they might leave it for Austin. Or are they going to make Creighton Prep think about who's going to take it? We know Austin's got a bullet of a leg. We've seen in the district finals. Yeah, I know he's at an angle this time, but maybe. And they're going to let Austin take it. Maybe fool him, maybe put a shot on net here, but you got Carson Schwarz and Hunter Novacek there on the end. Here it is. Free kick. Deflected off of Junior J, and it's going to be brought right outside the box. And now here's, here's Luke Waters. Waters look for a counterattack. Even numbers. Four and four, Waters holds up. Looking for a cross. Does McGuire back out for Lonesbury. But nice play there by Schwarz to clear it away. Give the Bearcat defense three time to, time to regroup. Played on the outside. Looks like it's Bossa. Leave it off. Seven minutes to go. Pierce O'Brien. Nice challenge here by Carson Schwarz, but Brian has it right back. Here's one in the box. Hardy will come out and he'll will take it up. Great read by Hardy on that chip play. Hardy will try to play it for Austin, but too wide. Anderson will look to play in the corner for Luke Waters. Waters will get to it. Back out for Semino. Al Semino. Semino again, looks to put one in the box. Hardy's going to come up on it. And it's going to be deflected right outside the box. Straka, there's it forward. Missed touch pass by Dakin. And here's Anderson. Anderson with a nice move. He's going to take a shot that Hardy. Hardy's right Whoa. there. Great position there by Hardy to make the save. Right there in the right spot. Great save by Hardy again. Look like that one started to curve a little bit mm -hmm. to the right. If it would have kept on that straight path, probably would have found the upper left. Huge break. Here's Green Prep right back on the attack. Waters off the face of Dakin and out of play. Now this is a bad sign for Carney because it looks like it's the same position as last year when Carney and Prep played. It was just a Prep game and Hardy's coming clutch. Well, it's kind of starting to be in the same way today. And if you're Carney, this is what you don't want to see. You don't want to relive what happened last season. Stoppage time. F exactly five minutes to go. Now they're going to let the clock go. Franco and Zadalis back on for the Junior Jays. Throw in here. The Kyle Samino. Change in the middle there. See if those fresh legs can't. Remember he Get had the ball up in the box. He had one of the chances that Crane Prep almost capitalized on. Ozala's shot. Here's the ball played in, but right to Hardy. So here's AJ Foz with the attack. But here's Royce Austin on the run. Looks to play on the outside to Foz. Chance for Carney looking for a cross, but goes far. I think that one got deflected just a little bit, threw off uh, Foz there. Here's Matt Studi, play back for Straka, look to put one in the box. Looks one has a chance, a header! Oh, up, just over, just the, over the net. Bar. 
Another good chance by Carney. But again, both teams catching some breaks. This is probably one of the best games all day. I don't know how the GI and Southwest game went earlier with one nothing, but this game could probably shape up to be the best one. There's a foul on Matt Studi. Looks like he just caught him on the ankles there from behind. Unintentional. Mm -hmm. Just gets a free kick. 3.15 to go in this game. Here's Kyle Samino on the outside. Zadalis looking for a cross. Missed there, but it's going to trail to the outside. Bryce Kavork, he'll clear it away. Here's Samino again. Austin hearing steps the, in front. Here in these last three minutes, this is where you're going to see a lot of balls up in the air mm -hmm. and over through the box, both sides. Here's a Dallas. Here's a cross. Headed away by Beam. Right to the foot of Christian Dakin. Looks to play ahead. Here's a nice move. Here's a shot. Right to Hardy. That 225. Is that is the 16th mm -hmm. shot for the Junior Jays tonight, but they have not found the net. Hardy's just been all over for the Bearcats. We've talked a lot about the diving stops he's made, but he's he's been up in the air a lot too. Mm -hmm. Corner kicks, punching things out. He's been on top of his game today. Anderson will play it back. Creighton Prep, 150 to go in the second half. Still tied at zero. Right after Carney just tries to survive these last 140. There's a nice play there by Schwarz. Maybe they're looking to play it to Fies. Fies looking to get something, and Nust will come out and play it. It will go out, so it will. No, no, it doesn't go out. It's just the shadow. Play it back. Ingen. Went off his foot at a weird angle, so Creighton Prep throwing with a minute 20 to go. Let's play back for Matthew Anderson. We'll play it all the way. Switch fields here, Semino. Trying to go give and go, but Hardy will come out on the through ball. Hardy sends it mm -hmm. out as there's a Junior J down. Maybe a little cramping, looks like it. So the clock will mm -hmm. stop with 43.1, tied at zeros. So as they attend to the play, we'll take a break here. In this Class A quarterfinal, tied at zero. Final 43.1 seconds to go when we come back here on the NFHS Network. Welcome back to Omaha. I'm your host, Jeff Extra, along with Color Jonathan Snover and Ken Rath on camera, Zach Warnkin. 
Class A quarterfinal tied at zero, 43 seconds to go in the second half. Guys walking off there was Duncan McGuire who went down, 21 goals on the year. Something to watch as we continue in this game. And Carney just try to hold it down for the last 30 seconds. Since it's been most of this half, it's been all Creighton prep. Missed header, it will, no foul called. Out of play, 10 seconds to go. Creighton Prep would like to try to get one last chance. Here's a cross. Hardy has it and he'll hold it. And we are headed to overtime here in Omaha. It is the second overtime game here in the Class A bracket. And this time it's in the four or five matchup between Carney and Creighton Prep. Five minute break here between overtime regulation. We'll take it with them. You're watching live here on the NFHS Network.
Here we go. And everyone, welcome back everyone to Morrison Stadium here on the side of the University of Creighton as we are in the Class A quarterfinal going to overtime. For those who don't, don't know how overtime works, there will be two 10, mere, 10 minute periods. So each team can go on the opposite, go to each end of the field because wind is a factor here today. There is no golden goal, which means whoever scores the next goal, next goal first does not win it. They will have to play the entire two 10 minute overtime periods. We are underway. Creighton Prep just like most of the second half, getting off some offensive pressure right away. And guys, the way Carney is playing, this game is going out. I'd say if you're Carney, maybe you want to play for penalty kicks. Yeah, if you're Carney, you know, Hardy's on fire. So, I mean, the one-on-one -on -one could change the advantage. But, like, right now, Hardy's on fire, just reading well. And if you go to the penalty kicks, it can do a great job. You got great shooters for the Bearcats, too, who we have seen this season out, out for the penalty kicks done a great job. So, that could be one of Carney's options. And it looks like they might do want to go to the penalty kicks instead of trying to get this goal since, you know, preps and putting so much pressure on them. And they're so. going to continue. They're not going to back off. I mean, they're going to get tired, but they're not going to back off. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the defense here for both sides will be uh, major key. And guys, if you don't see, I do not see Duncan McGuire out there who went off either. who went off with about eight minutes to go for five minutes to go with injury. It looked like a leg injury, and he has not returned. Lean score for Crane Prep with 21 goals on the year. But another big player for Prep has been number has been Walt, um, Waters. As you've seen it, he's done has tremendous times out, and he's kind of the Duncan McGuire today for uh, for the Prep is um, will be Waters. Yeah, Waters has been we've called his name a lot. Here's a cross that's gonna go way out of play. So goal kick here for Jacob Hardy. Minute and a half into the first overtime period. And in the, that second half, Prep kind of or pardon, Carney kind of stayed away from or backed off of the, the left side of that, that defensive line, which is was in the scouting report as their uh their weakness. So we'll see how Carney um, will attack. Um. Especially with the win here in this first overtime period. That was their success more in the first half. They did attack that left side and they've had chances out of it. And then that second half, they, like John said, they backed off of it. Boss on the outside. Looking to work it in. Now back out too far. Bryce Cork is there and he'll just play it out of bounds on the far sideline. And yeah, the Crane Prep has fed Bossa on the outside there and looked for crosses. Here's a takeaway by Royce Austin. Play it back. Here's Straka. Played ahead for Foz. Almost got over a defender. On the attack. Here's Novacek. He's going to take it away. Look for a cross. Gets by another defender. Still loose. Looks to send one, but it's going to be over Foz. With that angle he had him, mm -hmm. the pressure, it was just one that he can knock it off well, real well. Nice pressure by Carney here. Matt Studi. Get a fall. There will be a foul. I think, they were, I th think they're going to let Austin take this one. Try to play a good ball in the box, and maybe Carney can capitalize on it. Capitalize it. And this one, Carney needs to use their height and their size. Last time Austin had a free kick, did not go well, but this time they're gonna let Dakin take it. I would look for Carson, Carson mm -hmm. Schwarz, the six one, four, the six one forward. So I mean, it'd be great to see him. We'll try to look for him. And it's play more to the outside of the box. Ray J. Foz headers one in, but cleared away. Bossa is there. Bossa blocked by Kavoric. Nice play by the sophomore. Anderson will tap it out of play. Here's a throw in. If you look in the corner, here's Foz. Holds up, looks to play one in, and there is no foul called. There will be a goal kick. Austin fell. Here's a play. And it's going to go out of play for Carney, and that's on Sam Straka's side. So you're going to see a big throw in here from the senior defender. This is going to be big for Carney. This can be another chance to capitalize. That's what Carney really needs right now to capitalize. They want to get ahead on top and get that momentum on their side. And here's Straka. Deep throw in. Looking for a header out front. 
but it just goes wide. Back for Bean. He'll look put one right back in the box. He does. Here's a ball loose, but cleared away. But Dakey keeps it in. Another shot blocked. Dakey punches it right back. Now headed forward. Here's Schwartz across. Foz will go behind him, but could not. Now here's Dakin. Uh, and he tried to play it to Austin, but too far. On that, I think Foz just tried to get something fancy. He was kind of in the air, and the ball went behind, tried to kick it behind him. And, you know, Noose was out of play on that one, but that was another break for the prep. So, yeah, good attack there by Carney. But now here's Creighton Prep trying to answer with attack of their own. Studi breaks one up. Play one ahead. Here's A.J. Foz on the run. The hold up, look to feed one. Studi. Broken up, and here come the Junior Jays. Here's Bassa. Nice deflection. He's going to come in. Here's a shot that's going to be blocked by Hardy. It's a great, great save by Hardy, but that does put prep back in what they want to do is another corner kick. So here's a corner for Crane Prep with four minutes to go. Kwasi and Timmerman both back in for the Junior Jays. Um, I say back in, but I believe those are both extremely fresh legs that have not seen playing time. So we'll see what they can do against a, a worn down Carney defense here. You know, one thing I've noticed, Prep's done that Carney does, and they've put in new people often. They make much big subs. Carney really hasn't subbed as much as Prep has. Here is a corner that's going to be cleared away by Sam Straka. AJ Foz will get there in time. He'll just play it out. One thing Carney's kind of fell into, Foz has been playing um, back as a forward, but they've pushed the other two back a little bit, so on the counterattack, he's kind of all alone until someone can catch up. We apologize for the camera, just switching out batteries. We are back to it. Hard play by Bean on the outside. He'll just play it out here on the near sideline, but there is a foul, looks like on Creighton Prep. It is on ground prep. Mm -hmm. Are we going to see a car? No. Are we going to see a car? No. A little discussion. That's number two, Jacob Zadalis. So Hardy's come out to take this one. Final two and a half minutes of this first overtime period. Carney has had better chances than Creighton Prep. Here come the Junior Jays on the attack. Look to play one in the box. Goes too far. And hard collision there. He's and it looks like there's going to be a card. And that's a yellow card. And that'll be issued to number seven, Peter Kwasi. A senior midfielder. It looks like him and Bean were going out. Gave Bean the final shove, and he came out with the yellow card. So Waters will come back in for Kwasi who must sit for at least a play. Uh, that's one of those fresh legs Prep just brought on not even a minute ago. Um, that has not seen playing time yet today and came on and kind of fell into a trap and was issued with yellows. So two yellow cards in total in this game, one by each team. Touch pass to Novacek. To play on the sideline, Foz still has it, taken away. Looked like Foz got caught up a little bit on that mm -hmm. ball there. Nothing Edder. really he can do about that. Better one to Schwarz. Let's play it in, but broken up by the Junior Jays, and here they come. Ingen tries to break it up, but gives it right to Junior J. Here's a play, wide open net, and he goes up and over. Wow, what a chance for Creighton Prep. Another big play for Prep and puts it over. That's their 18th shot of the game. They have not found the net. And if you're prepped, that was the chance. That honestly could have was probably their best chance all mm -hmm. game to seal the deal, and they just wasted another chance for prep. And Carney with another sigh of relief. Another break for Carney. A lapse in the defense. 
One minute to go here in the first extra time. One minute, here's a play for A.J. Foz, back for Austin. Austin to Caleb Bean. Carney, 45 seconds to go. They do have the wind right now. They won't come the second overtime period. Here's Carson Schwarz on the run. Schwarz to the left foot, shot is blocked. Bearcats want a handball. That's gonna go out of play. It's on Straka's side. Or sideline, 30 seconds to go. I mean, it is a little too far, so we can see if try, Straka will try to get into the box. 20 seconds. Throwing by Straka. Looking for a header, giving back out of the box. Here, Here comes Craig Prep. Looking for an odd man rush. It's water. Five seconds. Oh, they got a man. It could go wide. He'll have to take a shot. And it's going to go up and over. And the first overtime period ends. Carney has some chances early, but Prep had a couple of ones to put it away and get a goal on the board late in this first overtime period. We're tying at one regardless. We'll come back with a second overtime period after this on the NFHS Network. This event is brought to you by Olive Garden. Olive Garden is proud to be the official dining room of high school sports. With menu choices to please the entire family, as well as to-go and catering options, it's the perfect restaurant for your post-game dining. To find your nearest location or to order your meal online, visit olivegarden.com. This event... Just a reminder, kids who participate in high school activities tend to go a little farther than those who don't. Take part. Get set for life. Hello everyone and welcome back here to Morrison Stadium in Omaha as we are set to begin the second overtime period here between Carney and Creighton Prep. Winner will go on to face number one Omaha South who beat North Platte four to two earlier today. Guys, first, uh, your thoughts on that first overtime period? I thought Carney did a good job of creating chances uh, better than they had there in the second half. They, let, they did not let Prep control possession for the whole 10 minutes and um, their defense is also holding strong. Prep had a couple really, really good chances there towards the end of that first overtime. And But here we are, deadlocked at zeros. Carney will start with possession, but they are going against the wind. Here's Schwarz. And if we are still tied after these 10 minutes, we will go to Penalty shootout. One of the most stressful things in sports. Here is a throw in for Carney. It'll be Caleb Bean. In part, in partly because the two overtime periods, so t each team can take the offense on each of the each end of the field. Blocked by Bean, and he's gonna try to make a cross, but to go behind and out of play. Goal kick here for Nust. Big thing here in the second overtime to watch is that Prep will get the wind. Mm. 
missed header. But here's Bryce Gavorik. Gets it to Matt Studi. And here comes Creighton Prep on the attack. Looking for Boss on the outside. That's in. They're going to hold up. Headed forward, Bossa. Outside, Straka coming up on the run. Out of play. No foul called, and it's going to go for Carney throw-in. Double whammy for Grand Prep right there. They wanted the foul, and they wanted the throw-in. But none going their way. Taken away there by James Ambrose. It's been one of those games, whoever has the win in their half, they're the ones who have the advantage. Wait, here's a chance for Royce Austin if he could split the defenders, loses track of the ball. I think he, he was thinking one step ahead there and uh, just took an extra step he didn't need to take and Matt's, stepped over. Matt Studi takes it away, looks to play downfield for A.J. Foss. He's onside. No one with him, though. He'll wait. Looks to play one across. It's going to be headed out by Anderson. Matt Studi with it. Battled for, no foul called. Played out, will be a throw in for Caleb Bean. Seven and a half to go in the second overtime. Thrown by Bean. Here's Austin, there's gonna be a foul. No award, the free kick to Carney. Mm -hmm. Looks like he got, he extended an arm there and uh, the Bearcat ended up on the ground and so they awarded it. That was Matt Studi. Yeah, Dakin's gonna take it. Look to put one in the box. Good chance for Carney again. I would look for Carson. And here it is. Dakin. Put one in the box, but Two header back out and here's Bassa. Looking for a counter. Austin coming from behind. There's Luke Waters. Nice outside ball to Bossa. He'll get to it in time. He'll go one on one with Austin. Bossa fell. Let's go for a corner kick. And that is the 12th prep corner kick they will have. So Waters will take it with 6.10 to go. And here it is. Go far post, look to head in the middle, but Novacek will let it go out of play. So, goal kick here for Jacob Hardy. Back on for the Bearcats will be number 24, Caleb Crittenden. He'll check in for AJ Foz. Fresh legs, and kind of can, Critton can show he has good speed, and it can be one of those where he can try to get a move and maybe get around the, the, the Junior Jays defense. Here's Jacob Hardy. Header four by Anderson. Right to Ingen. And Kavorik. Off angle. Header four by Bean. He fell, but there's going to be a foul called. And they're going to let Hardy take the free kick. Here's the ball played. Jacob Hardy, big kick. Green Prep has it. Play to the outside. Ball will be, and now it's out of play. So throw in here for Carney with 4.45 to go. And if you're Carney, you like what you're seeing right now in regulation. Green Prep's not controlling the field like they have. Uh, during regulation. Out of play again, but Carney will have to throw it in. And now they're oh. going to switch it. So Crane Prep will have the throw in, and then checking in is Jacob Zadalis, who's had a couple of great chances for Crane Prep to get on the board. be interesting to see what, what Prep's going to try to do here. The clock's ticking down, and they don't... They probably don't want to go to PK. Carney doesn't want to go to PK. Someone wants to win in regulation, so it's going to be interesting to see how this one comes down to the wire. Even, yeah, in prep, I don't think you want penalty kicks. 
because overall you control the possession and the chances. But the Bearcats have a hot goaltender. So here comes Prep. Waters will look to play it out. Here's a chance. It's by a man. A shot is deflected. They'll go here to the near sideline. It's going to roll out, so throw in. The 340 to go. Here's Waters. Puts one in the box. Just up and over. That curve on that one, though. I mean, Hardy was there for it, but the, just put it right over the box. Three fifteen to go. Jacob Hardy's free kick, or goal kick. Nice touch pass outside. Here come the Junior Jays. Play to the outside, looking for a cross. Blocked by Straka. Still in possession, though, is Creighton Prep. Gets by a man. Here's a shot. Deflex right back to Jay Ningen, who puts it out here on the near sideline with 2.40 to go. Ningen's done a great job defensively for the Bearcats. We've been calling his name a lot with all the aggressiveness he's been doing. He's been doing a great job. Here's a play in the box. Whiffed by Anderson, who had a chance at a header. And Hardy will scoop it up, and he'll play it out because there is an injury for Creighton Prep. So we'll take the break while they look at him. 2.23 to go, second overtime period. Tied at zero, we'll come back here on the NFHS Network. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to uh, Omaha. Jeff Ekstrom along with Jonathan Snow and Cannon Rath. Zach Wonkin on camera and producer. As we are tied at zero, 2.23 left in the second overtime period here in the Class A quarterfinal between Carney and Creighton Prep. A rematch of last year's Class A semifinal. Where Creighton Prep came out, came out on top of that one in the shootout. Here's the ball played to the outside. The wait up for it, it'll go bounce near the end line. Creeper up fell, and Straka will send it forward. It's just under two minutes to go. Here's Anderson behind the back, touch pass. Plays to the outside. It's 21, Lonesbury, but here's Christian Dakin. Bearcats just trying to hold on to the min final minute 40. Here's one in the box, but cleared out. Headed forward, here's Royce Austin. Austin, here's a chance. Foz gonna go up with it, can he get there in time? No. Here's Austin, another shot oh. that's gonna be blocked. And he cleared away by Creighton Prep. Well, um, that kind of reminded us something about last mm -hmm. season with that shot with Austin. Offsides on the Junior Jays. So free kick with a minute 10 to go. That was still a great play by the Bearcats. Austin just put it a little too far mm -hmm. in front, but Brayton goal, goalkeeper said no, and he came forward and he got it. Looking for put one in the box here with Sam Straka's leg. Now under a minute to play. Here's one put in the box. Too high though for Austin, and it's gonna be one by Prep. Beans gonna chip one forward for Novacek. Plays one on the outside. 40 seconds, A.J. Foz. Foz. Go to the outside, look for a cross. And it's gonna be a goal kick. 30 seconds to go. Prep, maybe trying to make one last attack. 
25 seconds. They're in the midfield. Here's Novacek. One last rush, possibly for the Bearcats. Mm -hmm. Up to the pause. And That's holding the line, doesn't go out. Looks to play that Royce Austin, sets it down. Looking to get a shot off. Still has it, cleared away. And that will do it for regulation. And just like last time these two teams met, we are headed to penalty kicks here at Morrisett Stadium. We'll take a break, come back with the most stressful part of sports, penalty shootout here on the NFHS Network. Hello everyone and welcome back here to the NFHS Network as we are here at Morrison Stadium for the Class A quarterfinal going to shootout. And by the looks of it, Carney has won the coin toss because Coach Steinbrook, when he wins the toss for shootout, he chooses to shoot first. And that's what Carney is doing. Last season, it was Carney who lost the shootout to Creighton Prep in the Class A semifinal 3-0. They did not make a shot in that shootout. Oh, I remember last season, it was one of those, Perry, the goalkeeper for Prep, was on fire, and he just saved everything, and then Prep's kickers just made everything. So this here, hopefully it's a different outcome for the Bearcats as they can try to punch a ticket to the semifinals. It'll be Royce Austin up first for the Bearcats on Ben Ness. Here and here go. it is. First round of shootout, top of the first. Here's the shot by Austin. It's in, went to the right side. And for the first time since 2005, Carney has put a ball past the Creighton Prep goalkeeper. That's been pretty impressive. It's been a long time. Last year they couldn't do it. And that's finally a stat the Bearcats broke. It took, let's see, um, it's 2018. It took 13 years for it to happen, but it's finally over. And if I can't see number two. It is number two. That is Jacob Zadalis. He had a couple good chances during regulation and overtime. Shot, it's gonna be right there at the lower left corner. Hardy, Hardy guessed it, but it just beat Hardy to the corner. He guessed it right. And now here comes Stram Straka. Who has a cannon of a leg. Top of the second, tied at one. Shot is in, top right corner. Great kick by Straka. That's the second time Carney's gone to the top right and Nuss has gone right 
uh, his own right. Two easy goals for Carney. Can't catch the number. That's Luke Waters, number 10. Luke Waters, who's been a dynamic player for Creighton Prep today. Against Jacob Hardy, bottom of the second. Here's Prep's second shot of the shootout. It's in. Hardy gets right, and Waters went McGuire. to right. Harden, that's Duncan McGuire, yeah. number 13. Yes, yeah, Duncan McGuire who had to come off because of injury. I don't think he once played. He did not play in either overtime. That's correct, he did not play in any of the overtimes at all. And here's Caleb Bean. Shot is in, top right corner. Guess Third time they went to the right. This time Nuss guessed it right. But Bean just put it over. Just couldn't quite get his arm up far enough and ball beat it. That's number three, bottom of the third, and it's James Ambrose. Shot is missed! Missed wide left. Wide to the left, and Carney has a 3-2 lead. Go to the top of the fourth of the shootout. Carney just needs to make these next two shots, and it can be it. Carney can come away with the victory. That one was going bottom left. Hardy guessed bottom left. Probably would have gotten to it anyway. But it missed the post, and now Carney's got the advantage. And here's a big thing here for Christian Dakin. Carney would still have the lead, but it would make it a two-goal game here in the shootout. Here's Dakin. It's in! To the bottom right, 4-2, Carney. And with a save here, would clinch it. Hardy with the save, this can be over. Bottom of the fourth. This is the time with the hearts race, boys. 15. That'll be number 15, Nathan Franco. Nate Franco, pressure. On him right now. Save would end it. And it's in. Top left corner. Creighton Prep still alive. But Carney has, they have to make, miss the shot. If, if Carney, Carney gets it, they win. If Carson Schwartz makes it, the Bearcats will beat Prep and get revenge from last year's semifinals match. This Carney win is on that leg right there of Carson Schwartz. Carson Schwartz, a chance to win it for Carney. It's in, and Carney beats Creighton Prep in shootout. Carson Schwartz ends it. Revenge, best, ser best served as a shootout. Carney for the second straight year goes to the state semifinals. Keeper Ben Nuss, he guessed right one of the five times that Carney shot it and the one time he guessed right, could not get a hand on it. Carney advances to play south. You know what that means, Jeff? A new new state champion this year. So yes, as Cam mentioned, a new state champion will be crowned. Carney goes to the semifinal for the second straight year and for the 10th time in school history. Your final, Carney won, Creighton Prep zero. We'll take a break. Come back with a post-game show, the Class A State Quarterfinal, here on the NFHS Network.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Morrisett Stadium as the conclusion of this one. Carney wins it in shootout, beating Creighton Prep to advance to the Class A semifinals for the second straight year. Guys, certainly a fun one. Stressful, but fun. Oh, very stressful. You know, the PKs, the stressful shootouts is what we call them. They're pretty stressful. And um, it's been a fun game all the whole game was just stressful. I mean, one side Carney had to be advantage. Other side of prep had the advantage. It just went back and forth, and ultimately it was just one of those fun entertainment games we could have here at Morrison Stadium. Yeah, uh, Creighton Prep, they had, I think, upwards of 20 shots, um, and eight or nine of those on goal. So uh, Jacob Hardy was outstanding today for the Bearcats, and they come away with the victory. Carney beats Creighton Prep for the first time since 1997. Yeah, as they advance the Class A semifinal, playing the number one seed in Omaha South, and uh, well, when you think about that matchup, thinking uh, tomorrow they will have to, Omaha South will have to play without one of their top center backs, which could be an uh, advantage for Carney, especially with their firepower up front with Anthony, uh, AJ Foz and Royce Austin. Guys, it should be fun tomorrow, Omaha South or Saturday between Omaha South and Carney. It'll be very fun without their star. The Bearcats are those two speedy forwards. I mean, they showed off real well today, and now they're going to be down. Since South's going to be down a man, it's going to be interesting to see how they kind of regain their form. You know, I bet. They were probably kind of scouting both teams and making game plans, and now that Carney won, they're going to probably try to make something, try to, like, everything does, get something around Royce, and I guarantee that that defender probably would have been the one to cover Royce most of the game and watch where he goes. Well, uh, they cleared the final stats, but uh, it was believed that Carney had around 10 shots, while it was Creighton Prep who had around 20, 18 or 19 in total. So Creighton Prep, a kind of a game summary. First half, it was kind of even for the first, let's say, 25, 30 minutes. Then it was Creighton Prep starting to turn things over that last 10 minutes and really putting on the pressure. Both goalies that half made fantastic saves, both Nust and Hardy in that first half. Then moving to the second half, it was mostly Creighton Prep for that first 30 minutes. 10 minutes, Carney started to swing it back uh, to 500 between each team, but Creighton Prep continued to put on the pressure in the second half. Still no goals allowed, which sent us to overtime where it was uh, Carney played better in overtime, I'd say, than they did for the entire second half, creating chances, getting some corner kicks that really put a little more pressure on prep than they, they were uh, getting handled on from uh, the Junior Jays. Moved to shootout where each team, uh, Carney made all their shots while it was James Ambrose who had the one, and guys, we talked about it. Who was going to make the first mistake? And who was going to capitalize on it? And it was James Ambrose. For Crane Pratt, made the first mistake. Carney capitalized and won the game. Yeah, he had that wide open pass. It was a great ball. It was just him and Hardy, and he just put it. It was right at the end of the regular, or I believe it was regulation. Just put way too much power on it. Just went flying over the over the goalpost, and that was the mistake for Prep. And I think that's what killed it. Carney kind of built off of it, and rap, if Ambrose would have scored that goal, that would miss. We could have been a different ball, a different story ending to the to this game. So guys, as we move forward, as we close things down here on the post-game show. Final thoughts as we conclude today quarterfinal action. I think Carney's got a good shot against South on Saturday. Um, obviously right now they're supposedly the best team in the state, um, but they are down star, a star center back and uh, Carney's gonna have the size advantage again. They're gonna be able to win in the middle. They're gonna be able to, to win on those set pieces. So uh, it should be a very fun one come Saturday afternoon. Yeah, Omaha South, they showed uh, they were human. They get up two goals, and in return, they got a guy with a red card. Cannon, your final thoughts. Oh, it was a great game. It was fine. I mean, personally, I think Prep, they played like they wanted to win. Carney played like they wanted to win. Honestly, both teams deserved to win it, but ultimately the Bearcats came out. It's been a great game. It was fun to watch. This is more fun to watch than last year's Prep and Carney game, as that was kind of more of a lopsided. This one was a mixture of both, so it was fun. To, it was great, and and uh, Carney came with the victory. So that was nice for the Bearcats, and a great sweet revenge kiss for the Bearcats. So Carney wins it in shootouts. To win it 1 0, move on to tomorrow's uh, or Saturday's Class A semi final. That game will be broadcasted live here on the NFHS, NFHS network. Myself and Alec Rome from Omaha Central will have the call on Saturday. So that is what is taking place. Other side of the Class A bracket, it will be Omaha West Side against Lincoln Southwest. So all top four seeds advance to Saturday's semi finals. So that's going to wrap things up here in this broadcast from uh, Omaha. Coming up next, we won't have it live stream, but it will be Elkhorn South and Omaha. We're in Conley, the two versus seven teams in the Class B girls bracket. 
But otherwise, Carney wins at 1-0 in shootout to uh, move on to their 10th uh, semifinal in school history. I've been your host, along with Jonathan Snover and Cannon Rath and Zach Wardkin. Uh, thank you guys for coming out, Jonathan. Thanks for coming out from Omaha.